So then you have the rotator cuff muscles. Okay? It's usually used in mnemonic sits, right? Subscapularis, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and teres minor. Okay? So they're going to form a cuff around the shoulder. So what's so this is the humerus, here's the scapula, this is the anterior, this is posterior. So what's this muscle right here? Uh, which basically would be here. What's on the anterior surface of the scapula? Subscapularis. And that does the internal rotation. Okay. So it's then you have the uh, infraspinatus over here, because it's in reference to the spine of the scapula. If it's below the spine of the scapula, then it's infraspinatus. If it's above the spine of the scapula, it's supraspinatus. And then you have the teres minor, and that would be this one over here. Okay, so what they're doing is that this is the humerus, they're making it, they're wrapping it around and it's a, a cuff, a rotator cuff. And what it does is it holds the humerus in tight to the glenohumeral joint. Okay. This is what makes up for the, you have more mobility in the shoulder. And what's going to add, give it some stability is the rotator cuff and then the glenohumeral ligaments. So the function of the rotator cuff muscles is to hold that humerus against the glenohumeral joint. But they also have additional functions like supraspinatus is going to do what? Abduction, right? Teres minor and the infraspinatus are going to do external rotation. Subscapularis is going to do internal. I mean, it's external rotation. Subscapularis is going to do internal rotation. So then you have some other muscles that cross the shoulder joint that also are in the upper arm. So you can have the biceps break out. Okay? Then that's C5, C6. Remember, one of the other myotomes for C5 was also the biceps. Okay? So that's going to flex the forearm and also it acts as a supinator. Right? On, the, on the humerus, the biceps attaches here so it supinates. Okay? Your pronation like this, the muscle pulls on the attachment and it goes into supination like this. The pronation, biceps when it contract, it's going to supinate. Okay? So that's why you know, if you're, you're making your biceps muscle, it's, it changes if you do this versus this, right? Because this is supination, it's going to pull the muscle in tighter. Okay? And the long head of the biceps goes across the glenohumeral joint. It comes up here on the top of the supraglenoid tubercle. So, that, so it's on the scapula. It comes across up here. It goes through that intratubicular groove. And then this also is going to attach to the labrum. Um, you know what the glenoid labrum is? Okay. You have the, the glenoid fossa, which is bone. And then the labrum is just a little rim of cartilage around the side that adds to, adds a little bit more stability to it. So here's the surface of, well, let's see if we make that oval. So here's the surface of the glenoid fossa, and then the labrum is just a ring around it like that. It just thickens it, makes the ball and socket just a little bit deeper. So it's like basically this little top of the aluminum can here. It just makes a little bit of a rim. So it's a, it's a ring of cartilage. It's just like in your knee, you have a meniscus. Right? So it's like a donut shaped thing, but it's, it's wedge shaped. So if it's, it's a ring like this, but if you cut it this way and look at it sideways, it would be like this. So if, and here's the ball and socket. It just makes the socket a little bit deeper. And the reason why I bring that up is because if it attaches to the labrum right there. So if somebody has an injury where it's pulling on the biceps tendon, they can tear their labrum. So in that upper drawing, is the tendon the arrow that's... This is that? the tendon right okay. here. 
And it's stuck on the labor which is like, like this is on the, this is the scapula here. Yeah. And they're kind of lighter. Well, I guess it's not lighter. But anyway, we're gonna This is the cartilage the surface right here of the humerus. This is the chloroplay process here and then the chromium. So oh, the labrum is just around. Yeah, it's a ring that it just makes it. I got some other pictures I can show you on another okay. slide after the break on the what, what do you say about the bicep tendon and labrum it, When If you have injuries that affect the biceps tendon right there, you have shoulder dislocations or things like that, it can, if that tendon pulls on it, it can pull the labrum with it. Okay. Uh, then you have coracobrachialis. It's going to go from the coracoid process to the mid part of the brachium. So that's in this area here. It's going to be a little bit of flexion and then also adduction. Okay, so then on the back side of the upper arm, you have the triceps. Okay. So that's going to attach, the long head's going to be on the infraglenoid tubercle. So the long head of the biceps on the supraglenoid tubercle, the infra, I mean the teres, I mean the triceps is on the infraglenoid tubercle. One's on the top of the glenoid fossa, one's on the bottom. And then you have two other heads that don't cross the shoulder joint. All right, then you have the pec major. So that's on the front here, obviously. You have two different parts of it, what's called the sternal division, and then, the and then that's going to participate in elbow flex, I mean, in shoulder flexion, shoulder adduction. And then if the shoulder is back in this position, if the shoulder is extended, then this clavicular portion is going to go more into here to flex it. Then the latissimus dorsi, that's going to come off of the small of the back here, the brachylomar fascia, and then it comes around and it comes over to the front side of the humerus. Right, it's in the intertubicular groove. So you have this intratrabicular groove on the humerus, right? So the latissimus is coming from over here, and then it inserts on this side here. So what kind of rotation is it going to do in the shoulder? Internal, Internal rotation. So it's going to turn like this. And then it's also going to extend the shoulder back like this. So it's, it's involved in, you know, swimming like butterfly stroke, things like that. So Michael Phelps has a pretty well developed lab, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's going to do extension, adduction, and medial rotation. And then Terry's major kind of goes along with the serrate, I mean with the latissimus. It's going to come from the bottom part of the scapula here, and then it's going to wrap around to the front, so it's also going to do internal rotation. But Terry's minor stays on the back side, so Terry's minor does external rotation. Latissimus dorsi does internal rotation. Where's the extension part of the <coughs> It comes to the front part here, yeah. so when it acts, it's going to pull the oh, back okay. like that. Okay. 